Hello again boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at fractions. In particular, we are looking at the relationship between fractions and decimals. We are in our math journals on page 91 in Unit 3, Lesson 9, Tenths and Hundredths. Tenths and Hundredths. So if you take a look up at the title here, you'll notice the uh, THs behind each of those words, ten and hundred, this is a way for us to recognize that we are dealing with fractions uh, out of ten or fractions out of one hundred. Okay. Now, typically, when uh, we've dealt with fractions before, uh, we've taken an object like a square and we've cut it into parts. Let's say four parts, and then we've identified how many parts are shaded in. Like this square right here, we would obviously see that there are four parts. Three of them are shaded in, so the fraction would be three-fourths. But here, we are just dealing with a, uh, a slightly more specific model where we see a square that has been cut up into 100 pieces. Uh, 10 rows with 10 boxes in each row. So when I look at the first uh, drawing here for number one, I can see that there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes shaded in in this first column. Okay, so that would make my fraction eight out of 100. Okay, so there's a total of 100 boxes, eight of them are shaded in. That makes my fraction eight one hundredths. Okay. Now, to represent that in decimal form, the easiest way to think about that is in terms of money. Okay. There are one hundred cents to every dollar. So, if I think about cents to the dollar, okay. If I had eight cents, that means I would have eight pennies, and I would represent that like so. Zero point zero eight. Now, when we look at decimal forms, you have to remember that the uh, decimal point, this guy right here, tells us that we are dealing with fractions of a whole. Now, the zero in between the decimal point and the eight, that is a, a place value holder, and that represents the place value of tenths, something that we've looked at before. Okay? But the 8 over here, this represents a place value of hundredths. So we are identifying that we have broken up the square into 100 parts and that uh, we are only dealing with 8 hundredths of those parts. Okay? So again, if I was dealing with money, uh, 8 cents would be represented in this uh, decimal form. Okay, now let's compare that to number two, where a lot more of our grid is shaded in. If I take a look at the, uh, at the rows and columns, okay, I see that there are several columns that are completely shaded in. So these would be groups of ten. So each column that's completely filled would be a ten, okay, or a tenth. So ten, ten. Idea. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns fully shaded in, so that would be seven tenths. Another way of thinking about seven tenths would be seventy hundredths, because if I add seven tenths together or multiply ten times seven, that gives me seventy. Okay? So if I have 70 pieces shaded in, and then I add these two here, that would give me a total of 72. That's right. So 72 of the squares are shaded in out of a total of 100 possible. So that would make my fraction 72 hundredths, or 72 over 100. Now in terms of decimal value, 
I would do the same thing. Put a zero there with the decimal point. And then I would just basically write the amount that's above, uh, that's the numerator, down here to the right of the decimal point, 72 hundredths. So if you take a look at the uh, second row of problems, they give you the decimal amount, and then they want you to shade in the appropriate number of squares. Okay, So again, we look at two decimal amounts, but they look very similar to each other. 0 0.9 and 0 0.09. Okay, it would be helpful for us to uh, represent those as fractions. Well, when we have a number in the tenths, that fraction would be represented out of ten. Nine tenths, like so. But there's another way for us to think about nine tenths, and again, I would. Uh, use the example of money. If I had nine dimes, that would be the same as 90 hundredths, or 90 pennies, because 10 times 10 gives me 100, and 9 times 10 gives me 90. Okay, So if I wanted to buy, say, a candy bar, and it cost 90 cents, I could pay the cashier in 9 dimes, or I could pay the cashier in 90 pennies. Now, 90 hundredths would be shaded in, and would look something like this. If I would pick nine columns, like so. And I would shade in every box so that 9 out of 10 columns was filled. I'm going to clean up my shading here a minute. There we go. It's a little, little nicer. Now, how does that compare to the other decimal amount, 0 0.09? Well, again, that place value holder, that's this form of that zero in between the decimal point and the nine, this guy right here tells us we're not dealing with tenths, we're dealing with hundredths. So I would represent that fraction as nine over a hundred, nine hundredths, like so. So that means I would only shade in nine boxes total, like this. See the difference when I take a look at nine hundredths versus ninety hundredths. Okay, it's really important to be paying attention to those little details, such as uh, is there a zero in between my decimal point and my digit? Okay. Now, finally, let's take a look at the last row of problems. It says color part of each grid and write the decimal represented. So this is basically a uh, an exercise where you get to create your own decimal value and then shade in the appropriate parts. Okay, so again, thinking about money, let's talk about 25 cents. 25 cents is one-fourth of a dollar. Okay, one-fourth, that's the fraction amount. That would be represented as 0 0.25, like so. Now, how would I represent that? Okay, so I would need to shade in 2 tenths and 5 hundredths, or basically 2 rows or 2 columns, and then 5 more extra boxes, 5 more squares. Because I could think about a quarter or 25 cents as two dimes and five pennies. Okay, so let's just go ahead and shade in. So here's one row, here's another. 
There's the second row. And here's five more boxes. You give me a total of 25 boxes shaded in. Now you'll notice each time I shaded in, I, I went from a different direction. The top row of illustrations have us uh, shading in from left to right. Uh, in the second row of illustrations, I went from right to left. And uh, in the third row of illustrations for this last example, I went from top to bottom. When it comes to fractional representations, technically it does not really matter which boxes you shade in as long as you shade in an appropriate number of boxes. So, for example, if I was going to uh, represent the value of, say, 0 0.07, okay, I would just have to make sure I shaded in seven boxes to represent that amount, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? But for organizational sake, and just to make things easier to see visually, um, it's better if I were to represent uh, those seven uh, hundredths uh, all in one row or all in one column like I did up at, uh, above it in nine hundredths. Because when I look at randomly placed squares, it's, uh, I, I, I really have to count them. Okay? But when I go to look at, say, seven hundredths organized this way, and I see them all nicely placed in a column, like I do in yellow, I can just see that there are seven uh, squares where I can look and see that there are three not shaded in and I can quickly do the mental math 10 minus 7 is 3 or 10 minus 3 is 7 which tells me that I have 7 hundredths okay if you have questions about how uh, to represent decimal uh, amounts uh, using a fractional picture like uh, these grids of 100 uh, Talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thank you.